Smith's method pilot study to evaluate the essential innovative cloud-based electronic medical record system that will demonstrate the public-private partnership to deliver person or patient-friendly primary care health services in the Ragama medical officers medical health area. So this was this is the background uh, which has been evaluated after a long day. Thanks to Dr. Anil Samarnayaka and we were shortlisted to the 20. We are waiting. I don't know whether we still will get the green light or the red light. Hopefully it will be the green light. So <clears throat> last week we presented this because we want to get everything uh, published on this, what we have done. So the National Computer Society computer, uh, had the sessions last week, and we got opportunity to get in an oral presentation, which we presented at the National Computer Conference of this cloud-based, open-source, primary care electronic patient record system for Sri Lankan citizens. So, this presentation is about why we did it and what we did. If you go back to the literature, you see the use of health. Uh, this is a key paper that I am, I'm sure all of you would have uh, read it at some part of your career. The use of health information technology, technology in seven countries. What it says is, they examined the adaptation of seven industrial countries that had enough and more money, no problem with the money, and found that many have achieved high levels of ambulatory EHR adaptation, but lagged with the respect, okay, lagged with the respect, thank you, with the efforts of inward patient care. So the countries who have achieved a lot has achieved going from the primary care to the top. Maybe it is a little bit older style. And this is what the annual health bulletin repeatedly says during for the last almost 10 years. Data on Primary care data on uh, outpatient care attendances are not routinely tabulated because they say it is almost similar to inward care, which is very, very hard to believe. And we have demonstrated this even in 2017 and around earlier, comparing a very uh, a nice uh, a mix of inward and uh, OPD patients' data demonstrated this. This is not a fact. So, how do the Sri Lankan people obtain health care? Everybody knows this. This is also from the annual health bulletin. It is supposed to be, we, are, we almost have 100 million consultations, OPD visits. Each person goes to the doctor five times. It is about 55% to the private sector, 45% to the public sector. But the thing is, what time do we have to capture the data? If you are lucky in the OPD, going to a government hospital, you will have one to two minutes standing or sitting with the doctor to capture the data in a three minutes consultation. In a private sector, a little bit more, maybe five to 10 minutes consultation, one to three minutes to capture the data. I was very happy that James was talking. I just had a look at, I Googled your name, and a paper came up. It's a data capture. You have written something on data capture. So <clears throat> this is my, so what sort of, so I have, I think, told you very clearly why we started with primary care. There's a lack of data on primary care, which is the backbone of our enjoyment of this primary prevention by public health people is the main cause that we have achieved this kind of healthcare statistics.
that cannot be argued with anybody. My argument is curative primary care, the clinical stuff. Then I am, I will just tell you why it was a cloud-based system that we opted for. Our people go doctor shopping at a rate. The morning they will be in an OPD, the same evening they will go to a GP, and the next day if the fever does not go down, they will channel a consultant. That is the typical. We can't change their behavior, I don't think. So cloud-based system is an ideal system that they go, and Vajira just told me, uh, told the audience, the most important thing that we have from the patient's perspective is the exercise book. Right? That is the record that we can talk about. Now, what we told them is the record book will be in the cloud. You go without the record book, the record book still, it is called the mental model of how we explain to our patients in the clinic. So, next, we had a problem whether to buy, build, or adapt. When we scan the, the literature and with my experience of roaming a few countries, living in Australia for 10 years, uh, going to and for, from Sri Lanka to UK, almost every year, two or three times, in the early uh, year 2000, 90, 90 to 2004, almost every day because I was lucky to be a panel doctor uh, to Sri Lankan Airways, not because I had money. So that's how I went to the UK, which I had the initial training in one of the great systems called EMIS systems. So what, what do we learn from the English system? Even the most even with almost unlimited funding, top-down systems will most probably fail. The best example is what happened in the UK. The NPFIT program started with almost 10 billion pounds, and they had to close the shop in 2010. Right. And the most, uh, the, the reason given is because it was a top-down driven project. The ministry told them what to do. There are many reasons. That's... Then comes USA. $37 billion, the EHR project, what has been done, debt by a thousand clicks. The result, they are forced to adopt a billing record for clinical care, and the burnout rate in US clinicians is the biggest problem that they face now. So we learned a lot of lessons when we went about designing our system, small, very small system. So first we thought, reinventing the wheel in this era of IR4 is hugely unproductive and can be considered even unethical because we don't have the money that the UK or the US have. Healthcare in Sri Lanka is unique and in many ways what is good for an African or a European country will not work in Sri Lanka. It is good to review the work done in low middle income countries, especially with open source software. If we have a little bit of money, how can we make use of it to the maximum? Out of the number of papers, we have enough and more evidence of the top five open source records available, and invariably open MRS and open EMR are the top. So we zeroed in on two software products and we choose the open EMR because the initial spending for this was less than the open MRS. I wished I had money to go on the open MRS, but I made use of this because little cost and it was out of the box kind of thing. 
So, and this is the another very recently published uh, the World Bank consultant who came, I think, about a few months ago, uh, has produced a very nice small book that Buy, Build, or Adapt, How to Decide. Again, the top five includes the two open source. Ultimately, as I told, we have one to five minutes for the clinicians to type, write, talk, and code. All the things. This is Sri Lanka. But when in, in the middle of this, we forgot we didn't ask the patients. So we had a committee. So we got down the patients and we were transforming, we were converting the paper records to uh, the computer records of open EMR when we Somebody told that we didn't even ask, because in Sri Lanka, we take it for granted, we give it to you, you don't refuse. That's the, generally they say, you stop for everything. So we got very nice suggestions from the old as well as the young. We converted, we gave the opt out. If you don't like, we won't be putting it on the cloud. So educating patients about having the medical record, it was easy. As I told you, the exercise book that you carry will be on the cloud. You go to the doctor, any doctor will have your exercise book. The next step. As suggested, we hope that the pilot study at Ragam Health Area with 70,000 patients, the World Bank funding is okay, reviewers did not comment on anything. It is over to the e-health steering committee. So hopefully, we will get the green light, hopefully. And <clears throat> the thing that we are anticipating is a funding for the purchase of clinical decision support system, especially for medication interactions, because if the doctors don't use it for anything, they will use it for prescribing. Because the only cheat that the doctor or a consultant gives a patient will be a prescription in Sri Lanka. And in all countries that they have done electronic records, primary care, doctors have got some incentives. Without that, however the ministry tells, we won't get the data and the quality of the data will be horrible. Why don't we give the research allowance to the doctors who use the, the records and do some validation? So I purposely have avoided any technical details. We can ask for, if you want to ask any questions, acknowledgements. So Dr. Jayasundra Bandara, director of the PSSP project, which has been very supportive under not easy conditions, especially dealing with me, uh, and open EMR, CM, uh, the Bradley Mirror, who has helped us a lot, and Dr. Anil Samaranayaka, direct information. At least we can go and talk to him. The final decision will be his, but at least we, are, we can access the man. And the patient committee of the University of uh, uh, Kalania Family Practice for all the help that the patients has given us. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Kumara, for those uh, words. Let's move on to the next uh, talk, um, which will be by Roshan Hivapatirana. Roshan needs uh, no introduction to this audience. Uh, Roshan, um, over to you. Thank you, sir. Um, the uh, topic uh, I was uh, asked to uh, deliver was uh, unifying the multi-sector uh, 
multi-stakeholder need for implementation of a national EHR uh, in Sri Lanka. So actually, this is a current uh, dialogue uh, now. Uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, activities are happening around uh, EHR, national EHR for Sri Lanka. Uh, so uh, some basically uh, thinking of uh, one single system for uh, entire nation and some uh, on the, o the other end, basically. Uh, doubt very much uh, whether this is a uh, achievable goal. So this is actually uh, summarizing uh, uh, what's happening uh, in, uh, in current context as well as uh, explores uh, uh, the possibility whether that can, uh, if this is possible, and if possible, uh, to what extent uh, we can go for a, a national EHR and uh, what are the uh, technological uh, know-how and uh, uh, approaches which uh, we can use to realize uh, a, a, a goal of uh, a national EHR. So the, uh, in this uh, brief presentation, I will be uh, uh, presenting uh, the Sri Lankan context uh, uh, of the Sri Lankan health sector. and. Uh, some design constraints of uh, uh, EHR design in very simple uh, words and uh, various other issues other than technical issues uh, which may affect uh, going uh, towards this unified uh, EHR uh, concept. And uh, uh, summarizing uh, what's happening in Sri Lanka, uh, it's not a kind of a architecture or something, but uh, just a summary of uh, things are happening uh, in Sri Lanka. Uh, uh, and then uh, some of these, how uh, the latest technology can be adapted uh, uh, going to this goal and, ident uh, and some of the key challenges like uh, identification uh, in this uh, task. So in Sri Lankan context, basically, uh, we uh, all know that stakeholders can be divided into t two basic categories, like preventive sector and curative sector. For example, this uh, Family Health Bureau is a few, uh, mostly a preventive sector uh, player, um, catering for maternal, uh, child, uh, family planning, that kind of uh, aspects. And uh, primary medical care units, uh, district hospitals, uh, base hospital, tertiary care institution kind of uh, uh, institutions are traditionally seen as curative sector institutions, um, which provides uh, basically uh, uh, medical services uh, to the population. But uh, when we analyze the system, uh, we may see some of these functional overlaps. For example, if we take uh, uh, the non-communicable disease, uh, the scope of non-communicable disease uh, program. It has a preventive aspect, but it has a uh, curative aspect also, uh, because it's uh, healthy lifestyle clinics or HLCs coming uh, under uh, the NCD program. Uh, so those are sp uh, specialized clinic uh, for uh, non-communicable diseases, but uh, the non-communicable diseases like hypertension, diabetic is being treated uh, uh, at uh, medical clinics as well. And the complications will be uh, dealt by uh, the surgical and appropriate uh, other clinical setups. So, uh, so when we think of unified system, uh, there are some overlaps uh, of preventive and curative uh, sector also. So another example is uh, National STD and AIDS control program scope and uh, tuberculosis control program scope because there's a concept called uh, co-infection of HIV and TB. So uh, any patient diagnosed uh, to have tuberculosis should uh, ideally should be screened for HIV and uh, diagnosed to have HIV uh, should be screen for TB. So there's a uh, need for collaboration between these two programs. Uh, and uh, this particular individual who diagnosed one 
uh, disease has to be screened for other disease. So uh, the other program should be able to track the particular patient and uh, register and follow up the patient in the other program as well. So uh, when we are thinking of this uh, unified uh, stakeholder needs, this kind of a uh, overlaps or uh, a bit of a complicated scenarios are also uh, uh, coming into the picture. And there are other services, for example, citizen services, CRBS, which is uh, Civil Registration and Vital Statistics. So uh, this is also, uh, the kind of services are also, or should come to the bigger picture or the digital health ecosystem. Um, to realize uh, unified uh, as well as continued uh, care. So why this should come uh, is because uh, through the C uh, C CRVS comes uh, the birth registration, uh, identification numbers, and uh, death registration. So the, uh, for the death registration, uh, the medical, uh, medically qualified uh, cause of death should be included. So th there are, uh, uh, so uh, the civil registration basically uh, in our uh, traditional design coming from the regional general department and the health sector is in the health, uh, the health department. So this interdepartmental or interministerial collaboration is also there. So uh, likewise, the picture is getting uh, more and more complex. And on top of this, there are some uh, other which non-health, non-clinical services like uh, human resource, financial, supply chain, uh, that kind of a things which is directly related to the maintenance of uh, the health services. And also now the GISS has been uh, buzzword everywhere. Uh, so mapping uh, health sector institutions, uh, mapping patients, uh, so those are the current discussion. But GISS is more uh, meaningful if uh, the data from other sectors are also coming into the picture, for example, the roads, uh, irrigation, and, and other water supplies, uh, the housing. So without uh, those, uh, the other layers, the health uh, GIS or the health uh, geography uh, would not be that valuable for the decision making, for example, to take uh, a decision on uh, dengue uh, spread. So we had to uh, think of uh, uh, other risk factors, for example, uh, the well-known uh, risk factor would be the construction sites. So uh, without that data, uh, the health data alone or the, even the case mapping alone uh, will not yield much information. So unifying uh, the different stakeholders has to go up to that level. So not only the health uh, sector, health institutions, but uh, uh, we had to think of uh, non-health sector players also coming into the picture uh, in this scenario. And now, uh, as Professor Kumar Mendes also mentioned, there are different uh, health uh, information system, open source, custom, and here actually I would like to bring your uh, attention to this simple fact that uh, now, in, in health information systems, we, what we record is basically uh, whether it's a preventive or whether it's a clinical or curative sector. Basically, health information system is looking at a concept called encounter. So the patient is coming to the institution and where encounter is captured. So different health information systems, especially uh, more generic approaches like open source information systems, looking at this concept of encounter in different ways. So for example, I have taken more, two most widely used concepts, like in institutional focus, for example, systems like DHS2. So this yellow uh, square, uh, I represent as one person and uh, the green one is for another person. So for institutional focus system, if one person comes, so that will be, that record will be uh, uh, taken as one. And even if the person comes twice in another day, it's two, two independent records. And uh, in open MRS uh, and open EHR kind of a systems, they are very, patient focus, and those systems actually uh, 
individual sequential record can be recorded. So in current practice, uh, the information system that we are using uh, in Sri Lanka right now also uh, can be divided into these, those, those two different uh, concepts. And it's very hard uh, to uh, technically integrate this uh, because I know personally OpenMRS and DHSU is trying this since 2008 with the variable success even for today. There's no 100% uh, uh, I mean successful or uh, uh, satisfactory uh, integration between these two different concepts. So uh, if you are thinking of uh, unifying the different health services, we have to think of this kind of a uh, organization, uh, the technical factors also. And other than that, actually technical would be much easier when we uh, think of the non-technical factor. So these are some of these uh, things, uh, uh, some of these uh, limitations. For example, uh, open source licenses. If you are integrating with the uh, GNU uh, GPL open source license, which is full open license with another software which is proprietary, it is not allowed by uh, that particular license. So. Uh, and th there are some hardware limitations, for example, especially like uh, IoT devices, card readers, uh, barcode scanners kind of thing. They are coming with their own third-party libraries. So that may prevent uh, integrating kind of a um, sector-wide integration. And standards um, that also have some uh, influence on um, uh, the integration, for example, uh, I think Prof. Kumar Mendes would be able to discuss more on this uh, matter. Uh, now, this I, we are currently using ICD, or the International uh, Classification of Diseases, as a uh, standard, but uh, most of the cases presenting to OPD settings, uh, are, it's difficult to list them uh, or the, uh, uh, decode them using um, ICD standards. So then we had to go for something like ICPC uh, or the primary care classification. And some policy decisions also may affect unifying as well as design. For example, national health policy prevents uh, basically uh, allow patient to be treated anonymously. So using a national identification, you may think of this, okay, we are, we, every one of uh, us uh, who's above 18 is having a national identity card. So why not we use to identify the patient that? Because that is a clear violation of human rights. So that's why basically we uh, have come up with uh, this uh, PHNO personal health uh, identification number, which uh, you may he hear more during these sessions. And the other, uh, not very health specific, but uh, the ICT uh, focus policies like e-government policy also having some clauses which sometimes may facilitate or sometimes uh, may have uh, adverse uh, influence on uh, integration. And uh, the things like uh, the role played by funding agencies. Some funding agencies like GFATM, they are very pro-integration. They want especially TB and uh, HIV information coming into a uh, single uh, source, but some actually is a global fact, uh, not uh, focusing on one funding agency, but the HIV and AIDS, which is highly uh, funded. So uh, across the globe, uh, HIV programs would like to stay uh, in their own silo without sharing the money and resources with other uh, Agencies, but fortunately in Sri Lanka, actually the influence of uh, the development partners, uh, external funding agencies, is very limited. So this is not a very big issue in Sri Lankan context. Uh, the other things like organizational politics, uh, especially uh, who the information becoming an asset. So the one who uh, has access to the information has a bigger power in organizational context. Uh, and organizational champions, they are having uh, sometimes positive as well as sometimes uh, negative uh, influence on integration or unifying uh, this thing and data ownership, data culture, kind of things are other things uh, which may affect. 
So this is actually not a, as I said, uh, architecture. This is actually summarizing what's happening in Sri Lanka. So uh, now we are having health facility-based information system. We are discussing on master patient index and enterprise uh, service bus kind of a things. Uh, I'll discuss about this ESB in very brief in next slide. And uh, there are third party providers like private hospitals who wanted to come in to this data uh, environment and some uh, private hospital already contributing to this EIMMR kind of a summary records and vertical health programs because uh, both health facility as well as vertical health program is catering for uh, a particular uh, uh, one individual and there are some uh, initiation towards the national health cards kind of a thing so in this case actually if you are going for a unified this thing we had to learn and adopt from uh, other enterprise uh, uh, based technologies also so uh, if you are going for this uh, we had to be cloud ready and uh, go for a uh, true distributed system architecture because all, almost all the systems we are having basically uh, focus on a single server architecture. And the security aspect is again very important and uh, in this case actually we are, uh, as Prof. Vajir uh, also mentioned, uh, we are working on uh, blockchain and some of these latest technologies and some of these uh, presentations will uh, expose those, the results to you and uh, this is uh, uh, if we wanted to unify uh, heterogeneous uh, systems, basically, we had to adopt this kind of a enterprise service bus kind of a things. What I mean by adopting is, uh, these are actually uh, well uh, the familiar systems to other industries, but then when we take a need to uh, health sector, we had to adopt, uh, I mean, we had to uh, customize it to the health sector, for example, like, uh, the terminology servers, uh, are ICD, ICCP, uh, can be uh, fed into the system, and uh, the different kind of a data like PACS and DICOM imaging will uh, be circulated through this uh, data channel. So that kind of things has to be included. And finally, um, the identification. If you are unifying the systems, identification is a very important thing. Uh, and they are actually the few things we had to consider, like duplication of medical records, uh, and uh, patient rights to anonymity, and emergency situation where the patient cannot be identified, and uh, the data volume consideration, what amount of data is we should keep uh, in the local setup, and what we have to fit into the uh, cloud, which is actually outweighed uh, with the concept of this uh, continued care across institution. So that is basically uh, uh, my uh, uh, message to you. And uh, so if I go back to uh, the title is unifying the, uh, the, the national health record, uh, so my answer would be yes, it's possible, but uh, may not be as a single system. So collaboration of the system should be possible and parallel to that we have to adopt latest technologies from other industries like banking and other uh, sectors uh, to make this a reality. So, thank you. Thank you Roshan for illustrating the complexity of the problem as it were uh, yeah, once uh, you know for those who are really working on going forward. So let me um, uh, invite Dr. Anil Samaranayaka to talk to us. Uh, he's going to talk about, uh, talk to us uh, on uh, the national strategy. Um, I would say maybe the evolving national strategy, uh, Anil. I don't know whether it's uh, uh, fully um, worked out yet. Uh, so Dr. Anil Samaranayaka is the director information at the Ministry of uh, Health, uh, he, uh, all the digital health programs uh, come under his purview together with uh, his uh, boss, the Deputy Director General of uh, Health uh, Services for plan uh, Planning, Dr. Sridharan. They are the key decision makers in the Dep uh, Ministry of Health on implementation of digital health in the country. 
uh, <coughs> thank you very much uh, for inviting me for this presentation. And uh, I must say I'm uh, relatively new to this uh, field, but not, uh, it's relatively because, uh, in fact, I started working with the, uh, your trainees uh, in 2011, I think. So from that time, uh, and uh, I know that uh, they, they came out with some of the best projects as well. So then that is the one reason I want to become the director of information. I, I became director of information not by default, uh, by design, because I, I really wanted to work in this field and that is the reason I selected this. So, uh, and this is the place where now up to from morning, uh, I think uh, you were discussing about this, uh, the digital dimensions. Uh, in fact, my post in my unit is the place where this, uh, this dimension in the, in the physical world come to uh, in, in contact with the, the digital dimension. So if we take uh, this, uh, uh, we have a vision, as, as we are all aware, that uh, our vision is to have a healthier nation that contributes to its economic, social, mental, and spiritual development. And uh, sometimes we forget that for what we need a healthier nation, this, for this purpose. And uh, our mission is to contribute to social and economic development of Sri Lanka by achieving the highest attainable health status through promotive, preventive, curative, and rehabilitative services of high quality made available and accessible to people. We have been doing this um, for many decades to a great extent as we provide uh, entirely cost-free uh, 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 service. I think uh, with that note only we should look into the future. Yes, yeah, we have uh, many achievements uh, can be proud of. Uh, our life, life expectancy and as you can see uh, females are a little advantage they have and uh, but yeah we have been recognized by the region and, and even by uh, uh, the WHO and we have some recognition in these uh, sectors as you can see our institution deliveries are almost almost 99.9 percent .9 and we have eliminated certain diseases the latest one is the measles uh, very recently WHO uh, uh, accepted that uh, the measles elimination. But we have challenges. As you can see, yes, uh, because of uh, this demographic transition, we have a uh, healthcare demands are increasing day by day. Our, our population is becoming uh, old very fast, as uh, all they happen in, in some of the, uh, in Singapore recently I was there, and they called it the Silva Tsunami. Silva is the, uh, the majority population, Hayakala, and Tsunami says it's a bit of destructive, which is a reality. So we also, I think, uh, we better uh, get ready for that tsunami as well. And uh, it's the maintaining of continuum of care across healthcare institutions, that is uh, what some we are trying to address. Ensuring universal health coverage. And as we know, the inconsistent services standards, service standards, disparity in care between rural and urban areas, that is in particular focus in the, our, at the current uh, World Bank project, the PSSP, primary uh, service strengthening project, to address the disparity. And uh, high health care expenditure, as, uh, as we know that uh, we every day new, new things are added into our health services and uh, health uh, uh, We can remember during our student days, uh, even kidney transplant was something to celebrate. Now we are in the age of liver transplant, so many happening. So which is a very good thing we saw within, uh, within three decades. So that all, all uh, it's, it involves not only the skill of doctors and a lot of money also, which is budget should come from the 
government and high uh, so high health care expenditure and changing health care needs of course the needs are different changing technology and uh, and some as administrators we uh, some challenges are unreasonable requests and loyalties and vested interests those are some certain things that uh, we have to deal with and the uh, digital health potential we all agree i think i should not uh, preach the converted so uh, we, as you know the potentials are there in uh, there are so many areas that we can improve by uh, ensuring digital health in fact it's uh, cutting across all the areas we can do major cost reductions as well as facilitation facilitating and streamlining as we as discussed from the uh, first presentation of professor ajira so uh, these are the interventions already there just a snapshot uh, i think you again uh, you all uh, better maybe this is part of your uh, curriculums you may have uh, probably the people who uh, initiated these systems are here in the audience so i don't need to describe many further these are the systems uh, currently in the mainly public health as you can see as i am also in from that field uh, i have particular interest there uh, in the public health there are many many public health systems running running very well and uh, hospitals now my our major concern is now uh, institutions so the digital health challenges in patients and care in sri lanka focus of uh, current digital systems is to manage information needs of healthcare managers and providers that is the focus but not much of focus on clients and patients uh, Maurice, even i have a uh, few weeks ago i was able to be in uh, china and particularly for this purpose under the world bank project we went and studied certain systems in in some of the uh, almost like semi urban or rural areas so their focus is of course uh, more than uh, it's not a free free system but still uh, it being built by as professor kumar mende has suggested they are in china most of the systems has come up from bottom they are developed that is the main difference we notice uh, they have to, they have started at the uh, grassroots level and come up and uh, institutionalization of systems seems slow again another issue and uh, minimum interoperability between systems that is the exact uh, one of the major areas we are trying to address in the current phase and uh, again uh, don't support is ch channel based on different services and disease focus areas uh, entire our yesterday on last few weeks we were having so many uh, encounters with different donors as you can see uh, 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 this global fund and there's another german uh, fund as well as world bank and id uh, adb Uh, yesterday uh, sometimes we had meetings uh, throughout the day with uh, convincing uh, because they speak different languages not their language per se but different uh, donors they need different formats different uh, uh, proposals to be submitted in different uh, some very elaborate some needs almost literature that's a some sometimes we have hired consultants for the mere purpose of writing a proposal which is ridiculous uh, i mean i see it as ridiculous because if they are objectively if they are convinced of the purpose and they should give us funds rather than uh, going for the literature of the project proposal uh, so so that is uh, uh, so, but still okay we may oblige still we are a middle income country so national ehr electronic health records that is our main um, topic uh, yeah this is uh, one of the if this comes i mean again the uh, uh, there are many attempts one good thing is that everybody is motivated from 
i am yet to come across a person to say that in any negative comments from top to from honorable minister to down to everybody i encounter they are very very supportive and very positive on they they know the requirement and very positive on that even i'm i'm glad to say to know i'm supposed to say this uh, the election commission himself uh, he agreed to provide us data which he said we have doctor we have never done this to anybody but uh, when i convince them we are trying to do it all the senior gentlemen they are in the commission i i i finally i said this uh, we are doing it for you not for us <laughs> then they were convinced and they agreed to provide some uh, data to us so that shows that to my quarter example to show that everybody is convinced that the requirement is there they are very supportive and uh, electronically maintained patient centric longitudinal record of health and illnesses this is a example you can see the or entire life story should be there and at the point is now we cannot do it in a hurry because once we start it there is no way we can return back to the paper based system we are doing it forever so that is the reason it takes some time and we should do, do it in a very solid foundation this is the uh, draft national uh, architecture as you can see the uh, we we are in a uh, as i see it personally as well as everybody agrees that we haven't still come to a stage that we can dictate any system we are in a learning phase but towards the end of the learning phase not in the beginning also so in, in near future in maybe 2 3 years we should take decisions and then we go to the real implementation phase but uh, so because of that Uh, in this uh, especially the uh, uh, this uh, adb project uh, all this project they may have a slight differences of what they do but uh, we have uh, maybe in one maximum two years time we'll learn from all the experience and be solid on one solution as i said earlier the as the little differences of the uh, donor agencies we are trying to uh, we had no option so we are to be in line with the request so uh, national uh, uh, strategy to leadership and governance nationally we have this uh, e health steering committee now we meet regularly and we have been supported by the secretary of health and the director general uh, but that is a very positive thing and uh, take our unit health information unit as a focal point and we have uh, started this uh, initiated the technical working groups working in this uh, different areas our uh, national digital health strategy and blueprint is currently being developed we have taken an, uh, again uh, who and all the agencies supported us and uh, yeah we are partner with all relevant uh, and international and international agencies uh, and uh, we are going to sign a mou the be prepared now with icta i think uh, uh, that's a wise thing to do and it is for us uh, we can take two stands either you can totally depend on your potentials and go alone or i think but it's a wise thing is to uh, I work with uh, the people who have already in, uh, invested money and they they know that uh, uh, we should not commit mistakes again if the others have committed mistakes and learn we learn from their experience so that's why we want to work, uh, work with even the all the other relevant agencies and we are uh, as i said earlier also we are try this phase we are in the it's a good thing that there are many donors and they have agreed conceptually it's a matter of uh, addressing the intricacies the detail uh, details to get the money yeah uh, these are the main areas as as you know uh, the interoperability is one main area we want to uh, address i think these um, all, all details and uh, legislation and policy and compliance one good thing is uh, as we are centrally uh, coordinating uh, 
uh, even uh, the provincial levels, uh, as I said, they have a lot of support and we have uh, established uh, channels of communication, so we work in them. As we can be proud, uh, that is what I, I, though I am coming from a different uh, speciality, I am from public health, but I have taken it up to me now, I, I see always the future of these, uh, future of you. I see as a part of my responsibility, I'm going to be there at least for five years. So to make sure, to uh, provide a conducive environment for the people who are in this uh, bioinformatics. So that I have taken as uh, interpersonally as well, not without uh, resistance, but I, I, will, uh, uh, I will do it. And uh, this is my last slide. Small steps in the right direction are better than big ones in the wrong direction. There have been many steps, but I think uh, uh, this is what I believe. I, I think all stakeholders, we have all this communication, I, they agree that we are just getting into the right direction. So I want to finish my uh, presentation with this slide, but I think this. So he only, yeah, the journey of a thousand miles begins in a single step. I don't know whether he liked the sentence or the picture. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much to all the speakers. I'm very much to <laughs> respond to some of the things that were mentioned. Um, yeah, I think it doesn't matter. I think, I think the challenges of implementing electronic, you know, uh, an EMR strategy for a country is, it falls in, in my kind of view and experience into sort of a couple of key things. I've seen more strategies than I can care to mention what I don't see very often is implemented strategy, constant recycling strategy. So I think there's a couple of things about that that implementation process that's that I think I've heard is about this small steps rather than the big jump of a uh, leap of faith. Because I think if you go for the big bang transformation straight away, it, it just doesn't, it never seems to work. I think the other thing is about the stakeholders involved, and having recently been sitting on the Republic of Ireland's eHealth Strategy Advisory Board, having the patients really engaged in this is really important because I think it helps a lot with the buy-in and it builds trust um, and trustworthiness within what may be sometimes perceived as a, a privacy issue, and I think my advice would be also to, to look for that, that patient voice as part of this, because I think it'll add great value in, in, in a strategy and in a deployment as well. But I, I, I think if anyone can do it, it'll, it'll probably be here. Thank you. Thank you for your confidence <laughs> in us. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, what about your experience um, that you described in your previous talk uh, in Africa? Um, in you know uh, how successful have you been and uh, but uh, you know the infrastructure challenges they are much more pressing than what we have we don't have those challenges um, is there anything that we can learn from those uh, yes so I, I think my experience again in in Africa it has been around trying to make sure that, I think there's lots of examples of where there's lots of plates spinning simultaneously. So everyone rushes to go and do something and we end up with very uncoordinated efforts and, and the interoperability issues and, and then various things sort of um, don't work. And I think the one thing I'd say about all of this is the patient identifier is the crippling cause of, of issues. Um, so I think the, the identification, the strategy, holding the strategy in the line um, 
making sure that NGOs and other stakeholders are um, brought in as early as possible. That they're the, the mistakes I've seen in, in a number of places is, is this uncoordinated environment. And I think the other thing is to make sure that you know, the infrastructure is there. Um, Ethiopia is a good example that there's very little in, uh, infrastructure, but they've really spent a lot of time recently thinking about the fact they do need a good quality data center. They do need to be able to scale things. They should consider cloud and they need to consider the connectivity issue as much as the, the software issue. I think the infrastructure bit has is, is been one issue as well that's come up. Yeah, thank you for pointing out the need for a, a good quality data center uh, because I think um, that's uh, one of the real challenges we have. Um, Anil, have um, uh, within these discussions that issue been addressed? Uh, what are your thoughts there? Yeah, really, uh, as I said, uh, one of the major uh, components of this project of the German grant uh, the data center and uh, i hope uh, if, if everything works we are going to have we have even prepared estimate because even the, uh, though the government cloud is available this one thing they are going to be probably get overburdened with time so uh, because and we can if at all we can we are going to use it as a backup so the, the data center the ministry has agreed and uh, uh, so they have given the green light. The ministry has prepared the estimates. We have already prepared tentative estimates. And if this German project, uh, it's not a project, it's a kind of a, our money. We, we are, if we are not, we are utilizing them properly, they don't need to us to pay back. So that's the arrangement. So uh, I hope uh, it's just a matter of their National data center with that money. That's a very positive move because uh, I think what we've seen uh, is that there is uh, there are lots of uh, there's a lot of money spent on individual servers at institutional level, and uh, that's really a plan on how to um, you know addressing the security issues as well as the maintenance issues and so on. So getting that right would be uh, very important going forward. Uh, Kumara, would you like to, do you have any thoughts to add to this discussion? I think, <coughs> I think uh, when we started Hisl uh, Vajira a long time ago, there were at least two or three clinicians involved. Sham is not on the scene. Um, Jeffrey's no more. And I would like to see clinicians coming in and doing at least a master's of medical informatics because if we lose that touch of clinicians participating, I mean, we will have a divide. This is your field and this is my field. I mean, uh, Enrico Coira, uh, uh, he says, uh, if uh, physiology is, uh, forget physiology and pathology is the disease and uh, informatics is the health care in itself. So if you can't separate, but my concern is whether we will again have a, a bioinformatics only tier telling the clinicians what to do. That is a very dangerous situation because they won't, they won't agree on this and we will have a, a you know, divided opinion. So one option is to encourage at least some of our uh, MSCs and MDs to do at least a clinical field so that you, you can identify. It. And the patient's voice has to be heard because this is what we are, uh, I mean, we, as I told you, we completely forgot about to patients. And out of that, we learned a few 
lessons. I think uh, these are two main, uh, we are all informaticians, right? But where are the clinicians and the patients? We have to uh, make them part of the team. clinician and, and patient part um, I did you know, I ask constantly clinicians what will it do for me to make you put down your pencil and use an electronic medical record and they say I'm not going to put my pencil down until that does something that helps me look after my patient and historically they always said what it is that I'm trying to do so I think that's the most important thing, in none of us will do anything unless it's sort of adding value to our, <laughs> we don't like doing things for just doing things sakes. And the patient bit is that there are, in the UK, we are awash with patient apps. There are hundreds of thousands of them. As we all put in our pocket with lots of apps on them, most of them we probably don't use. We probably only use a few of them. Um, and to remember what the patient wants from a health app as well, or what they want from their health service, may not be a, an app for this, an app for that. They want an app for their health service, and where we've seen that work well with patients, actually augmenting the electronic record with uh, with data, so them being a part of the process of pro pro providing data to the health service, is because again, we've got to remember we've got to give them something in this process too to make their life easier. And there are great examples around the globe of, of examples where informatics is enabled the patient to get a better experience or a better service or have better care. And, and I, I can't iterate more the importance of the patient and what the patient wants from it as well. Thank you for those comments. And um, I can... Um, uh, re relate an anecdote. Um, Nishan, who's in the audience, would uh, like this up uh, because he's lead the retirement project. And uh, um, some of the private sector hospitals have been uh, asking him. Uh, they have been coming and looking at uh, what's going on at uh, Cancer Hospital Maharagama and um, and at uh, Kasa Street hospitals. And they walk in there, and the private hospital uh, actually the uh, in Colombo, all the information systems are on table, and they can't get the doctors to use the systems. So they come in, Ishan, and ask him, uh, "Okay, how do you really make these guys? Uh, you, you, your doctors are all using the systems. Uh, how have you convinced them to uh, use it?" Uh, so the clinicians, I think, the success of the Ministry of Health uh, programs has been the fact that uh, the clinicians have been. Leading, uh, and uh, the people who've been come to, uh, coming to the biomedical informatics course have actually have that clinical background, and uh, so we've uh, seen that in action. Um, um, Dr. Samaranayaka, how do you uh, like address this issue of involving patients in this um, uh, process? Uh, are there plans for that? Yeah, exactly. Now, uh, there is a patient's um, charter. It, uh, it has been, uh, they have uh, made uh, the, uh, with the WHO initiative, they have even prepared the draft to a great extent. Now it's, it's in the final stages, so we are going to uh, uh, have a final stakeholders media, our unit only coordinating that at the end of this month. And then it will go to the cabinet and uh, it's, it is, it is a lot of, you know, Dr. Lanka Disana, she has made uh, initiative and uh, great for us. I think uh, it's in the final stages because even, uh, as I said, if you talk uh, in the international forum about this uh, health and digitalization, they ask what I go to from the side of the patients. Now we should be happy that uh, now we are all talk about that and we are going to reduce that. A, it's we you know it's a, uh, all this data and information. This their property, really, really speaking. So uh, good that now we are addressing that. So the charter is uh, for um, patient engagement in uh, healthcare services. It's just not uh, focusing on information systems overall. It's their rights and all that. Okay. Okay. Uh, Roshan, I'm going to ask you a tricky question. Now, uh, we've been talking about the donors driving the agenda sometimes. 
Um, and uh, you had experience both in Sri Lanka, working with the donors, on the donors side, the ministries of health side, and so not only Sri Lanka, but also abroad. Um, how do we navigate this, uh, you know, uh, uh, navigate this path? How do we really, uh, you know, strike a balance between the, um, you know, sometimes the donor trying to drive the agenda as well as the Ministry of Health and so on? Uh, yes, sir. that's actually a well-known fact. Uh, and one way, I think, uh, to resist or have the control is to having uh, uh, the proper national uh, what we are doing with the money. So I think that's the approach uh, we have already taken under Dr. Ali. Now, that's right now. These days, actually, uh, I think both major donor agencies in Sri Lanka. And uh, I mean, this time it was different. So that's uh, even yesterday meeting <laughs> was mentioned after. I mean, I have worked basically with five director of health information. Now this time we were actually think. I mean, we, we were designing a national architecture. Also, uh, actually, uh, especially uh, with uh, Dr. Chamind, Dr. Nirang, and uh, Dr. Prasad, we were discussing, sir, uh, uh, to have elaborated uh, national plan so that uh, if a donor comes with the money, he can to a national plan, uh, keeping their interest as well as the national interest. So I think that's, uh, otherwise, uh, some donor agencies, as I said, they will promote uh, the collaboration, but some donor agencies really uh, try to get the data out of uh, whatever the national system, and they create huge uh, fragmentation in health sectors by putting their money into their systems. Yeah. Just uh, my little thing. Mm -hmm. Same uh, in the same era. For the, I think for the first time we had uh, all donors in this one meeting. So I think that is easier for us also. And they, it is uh, even even uh, in the audience also. And uh, uh, that is that is uh, that's a good thing. Uh, it was later we understood it's good. It's easy for us also. Now all donors know about our plan and that that program that diagram we presented. So uh, I think uh, that is uh, that is also maybe initially it was difficult. Now we understand that it's uh, it uh, easy for us at the end. That's that is what we are going to do. So we we will sh even if they are not that meeting, uh, they all are physically there. Even hereafter, I thought of sharing with uh, them all the information. Right, and um, by uh, you know the wonders of technology, I just got uh, my phone. Uh, Rohana sent me uh, data of a patient satisfaction study done on the implementation of uh, uh, the um, um, system at Castle Street Hospital and the overall, um, um, overall results of uh, that study are that the patients are highly satisfied. More than 90% Rohana, just look at this data that you have sent me, more than 90% of the patients are highly satisfied with the re-engineering that has happened uh, with the introduction of uh, IT in the um, uh, in the um, uh, OPD and other settings, mm -hmm. so um, uh, this we can encourage this type of uh, studies uh, to facilitate this engagement in the future. Are there any questions from the audience? I know there's a group from the insurance industry uh, which is here. Uh, would you uh, want to ask any questions? <laughs> Anybody else uh, who might want to? Our World Bank friends, would you like to say something about donor, uh, you know, interest in uh, <laughs> promoting? absence of any questions from the audience, uh, let's um, bring this um, session to a conclusion. Um, so thank, I would like to thank all the speakers uh, for their wonderful presentations and uh, 
Um, I would also once again like to thank and acknowledge the leadership role that uh, Dr. Anil Samaranayaka has uh, taken uh, to, you know, unleash the potential of what is there in this country and the, um, uh, the, uh, the value proposition that the BMI is bring to the Ministry of Health in terms of deploying their systems. Um, I'm sure uh, with um, um, the leadership that uh, is now present in the, of that, uh, in the next uh, few years, because uh, we so we see uh, Anil. I, I think I'll be correct when I say we see no uh, lack of funding. Right? Currently, there is no lack of funding. That's the uh, bottom line. So there's no funding issue. It's an issue of uh, you know setting. The, have implemented strategies, uh, not uh, just strategies and strategies on, t on the table, uh, which are not implemented. Uh, so we can, I think, definitely um, expect to see great things happening in the next few years. So without um, uh, further ado, let me hand over to the uh, MC. Um, thank you, Professor Vajira. I would like to invite you to present the certificates for the panelists. Professor Kumar Mendis. Dr. Anil Samaranayaka. Thank you, Professor Vajira. That concludes the morning session of our, our Digital Health 2019 conference. I would like to invite you for lunch, but uh, be present and seated in the hall for the free presentation by 30 p.m. Free paper sessions will be held as following. The oral presentations will be held here in the main hall, while the three-minute pulse presentations will be held in the Sapphire Hall. Thank you.